I wasn't any feeling of risk or panic. There wasn't a huge people trying to rush up you know, to the front and no crush. It was chaos, but organized chaos. When you look at things like budget cutbacks, you know, the, the environment gets hammered. And of course, other things matter, of course. It was all... I was 16 and um, music suddenly changed in the early 60s. It um, was all um, UK artists doing covers of American records, no original or very little original music whatsoever. Um, the Beatles came along with various other bands um, who had their own brand of, I suppose, rhythm and blues, um, music that people really hadn't heard before. Um, and they moved on and they created this sort of excitement amongst the sort of younger generation uh, and horror amongst the older generation who <laughs> wondered where the world was going. And, um, but they were, uh, they were, um, as if an atom bomb had exploded in the world and suddenly there was this new, this new frightening um, young generation who wanted to create um, and it changed everything. Um, their music changed everything and myself and my friends at school really wanted to go and see the first performance of the Beatles in Belfast and um, we made arrangements that I would get down to queue early, get the tickets. So I cycled, cycled down the road and parked my bike outside the, um, outside the Ritz Cinema, which is now Jury's Inn, and um, at about three in the morning and um, queued up until my mates arrived and I went off and had a break and we got second row seats and I was determined to um, take photographs. I'd got a camera for my um, Christmas birthday, which was on the same day the previous year, and I wanted to take photographs of the Beatles on stage. This month's Dark Through the Month is a series of photographs about, uh, of the Beatles when they came to Belfast in 1964, and it was purely by chance that we got our hands on them. Um, the man that took the photographs was a Canadian photographer called Nick Newberry, and he was a student here in the 1960s. He was going through his papers recently, and he discovered uh, these photographs that he'd taken in 1964 when the Beatles played at King's Hall. He was a student at Queen's and he uh, was selected to take the pic pictures because Queen's photographer for the magazine The Gown didn't like the Beatles, didn't want to go to the concert and said, I've got a free ticket, do you want to go and see this? So uh, he went down, took four shots. He himself told me he didn't particularly like the Beatles either, <laughs> but it was a free ticket and um, they were famous, as he said. So he uh, took these four shots of the, of, the, of the Fab Four, so he had one of John, one of Paul, and then one of Ringo and uh, George playing together, and the fourth one of three of the four playing together. But obviously they mustn't be good enough because they were never published, and the Gown magazine editors never used the actual the pictures. So they've lain in his personal papers for the last 50 years. You turn around, all you see were... People were fainting. People were fainting, people were, chairs were breaking, uh, not through, through vandalism or violence, just simply because people were standing on them and um, the cinema chairs couldn't, couldn't, couldn't take that. And, um, but there wasn't any feeling of risk or panic. Um, there wasn't a huge people trying to rush up you know, to the front and no crush. It was chaos but organized chaos but as you can see that um, I was in a very good position to take to take pictures even with a, a very simple camera um, but I was limited to I was limited to the amount of film I could use because I could only afford one roll of film and I'd already taken quite a number of shots um, of people outside and things that were going on so um, I was seriously limited to the number of shots I could take, but I took about 15 to 20 shots of the Beatles on stage, of which um, six or eight were really, really good pictures. Paul McCartney um, is, is, is my favourite shot, because it sums up what Paul was all about. He was, he was a bit of a, a 
I think he fancied himself as the best looking guy in, in the band, which always rankled John Lennon, of course, because John Lennon was probably the most intelligent member of the band. But the, the one of McCartney singing on his own was um, a shot that uh, everyone loved that afterwards. So you have an individual photograph of uh, Paul, an individual photograph of George and Ringo in the drums, and then you have an individual photograph of uh, John and the photographs, the individual photographs are all at different angles, you know, and we, we use Photoshop to straighten out the angles so you see the, the piping going all along in a, in a, on a level line. We're 50 years later and we're still celebrating it. Why, why do you believe that is? I think because it was unique. I will never happen again. It will be the 60s generation um, changed the world um, politically, um, musically, artistically, sexually changed everything that uh, had gone on before. I think people look back to that as a, as a critical mass in terms of uh, and everything that, that is here now is here now because of what happened in the 60s. today are Dermot from Forage and Declan from Friends of the Earth and they're here to talk to us a little more about the environment. They're going to talk to us about the state of the environment here in Belfast. Cider, his body. 